Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and today I have um, a special video, I could say. I don't have almost, no, I don't have any of the books that I'm going to talk about, but I'm really excited because when I restarted reading, non-fiction was one of my first pickups and as you can see from the title, this is going to be a peruse of books of non-fiction that I catch through my uh, favorite YouTubers and perusing through the internet, like randomly, I discovered um, some books. And I like to talk about it because I think it's always fun and always useful to share a list of books that you are interested in and this is going to be I can't promise it's going to be for the near future but eventually someday I will talk about these books in this channel I will go in maybe in a vlog maybe in a book review or review video but I, I'm really excited to share these, I, I don't know, let me see. They are, they are almost 20 books that I'm going to talk about. And this is going to be, if you're interested in nonfiction, I think you will find these useful. Perhaps you know some of them or all of them, who knows. But perhaps you don't know and you never heard on uh, talking about at least some of these books. I hope I'm going to be putting public a video that will be useful to you and will interest you or pick or you will pick up some suggestions that you will find interesting. So let's hope for that. But so the first book it was i don't i'm not sure if it was in a stephen colbert uh, interview in his talk show or a jimmy fallon interview but it was quentin tarantino and he was talking about his book cinema speculation and i found it like that in an interview now i'm not sure in which talk show but you know but Quentin Tarantino is a famous director and he also is famous for loving cinema and watching many films and many many movies you know and I have my computer uh, near me so I can uh, see the synopsis and talk to you a bit about it so I don't I'm not going to read everything because we wouldn't end this video in a more or less this is going to be long i'm predicting but i don't want it to be longer than it should be so this is organized around key american films from the 1970s all of which he first saw tarantino as a young moviegoer at the time this book is a uh, as intellectually rigorous, as insightful as it is rollicking and entertaining. At once, film criticism, film theory, a feat of reporting and wonderful personal history, it is all written in the singular voice recognizable immediately as Quentin Tarantino's and with a rare perspective about cinema, possibly only only from one of the greatest practitioners of the art form ever. So I'm supposing this is going to be his recollections about movies that he saw or movies that he loves. Um, because as I was saying, he's known for watching and be a fan of the format. And I'm really interested in reading this book. I wanted to be, or better, I wanted to have a physical form of the book, but here in Portugal, I don't know, let me check. Yeah, I have a um, bookshop 
site open um, and it's a bit expensive it's like 32 euros so for me that's expensive for a book so I think I'm going to try in the future catch um, a promotion so I can pay a little less for the book or eventually if that happens perhaps buy it in second hand and hopefully it's not going to be so salty the price but you know we'll see the next one i want to talk about is lady sings the blues by billy holiday and i think i found this in goodreads like perusing the site searching for other things i stumble upon it um, and i i didn't know billy holiday had written a book so billy holiday is a jazz singer she's from the so she's a singer from the 30s 40s 50s and i, I love her i think i love her voice i i love her songs and um yeah she's one of my favorites and i didn't know she had written a book so this is supposedly um autobiography and i was very interested right away to pick up this book so let me check a bit about the synopsis so you have an idea um, what we'll talk about. So Lady Sings the Blues is the fiercely honest, no holds barred autobiography of Billie Holiday, the legendary jazz swing and standard singing sensation. Talking the reader on a fast moving journey from Holiday's rough and tumble Baltimore childhood to her emergence on Harlem's club scene to sold out perform performances with the Count Basie Orchestra and with Artie Shaw and his band. This revel revelatory memoir is notable for its trenchant observations on the racism that, that darkened Billy's life and the erring, the erring addiction that ended it so too soon. We are with her during the mesmerizing debut of Strange Fruit, with her as she rubs shoulders with the biggest movie stars and musicians of the day, and with her through the scraps with Jim Crow spat with Sarah Vang Vaughan, ignominious jellings and tragic decline. All of this is told in Holiday Start, streetwise style and hip patois that makes it read as if it were written yesterday. So yeah, I want to know more about this singer, uh, although I enjoy her music and enjoy her voice. I don't know so much about her life and to have a perspective on her, her own words um, is quite interesting, I find. So yeah, I'm really curious about this book and her journey and her perspective on her, her own life and perhaps in the future, I didn't put any, anything here because I didn't research for it but perhaps I also will search for a biography um, written by other people or uh, other biographers so I have um, a different perspective on her life but yeah, I'm quite interested then I have here a set or um, a trilogy perhaps of non-fiction of course of a History of Religious Ideas by Mircea Iliad. So I found about these books and I'm not sure if the author, I suppose it is by him, I'm explaining it wrong. So of course these books are by Mircea Iliad, but um, when I first heard about them or about this series, it was on a Jordan Peterson interview and he was talking about 
different books that he finds essential for everyone to read and this one was there in his list but at the time I didn't catch the author so I'm supposing the books that he was talking about was by this author because then I researched for it and the author that came up was this one so I'm supposing that the book that he was referring to was by this author you know what I mean so yeah and so the first one is called from the stone age to the Eleusinian mysteries the second one is from what Gautama Buddha to the triumph of Christianity and the third book is from Muhammad to the age of reformers reforms I'm sorry so this will have I suppose um, I'm sorry I found it the synopsis in Goodreads but it's in French and I don't understand very much French so <laughs> um, so this I su I'm supposing is going to be an overview of different religions and the history of different religions and I'm supposing, I'm hoping for the perspective of this author about the history of religion and the different kinds of religions that exist or at least some of them perhaps the most known I'm quite interested I didn't have made this um, connection but perhaps I will include this, um, these books uh, on my warm-up to the reading of the Bible because or maybe in the cooldown because I made a, a bit of a project that I'm still working on I'm still researching for books and references of books that um, may maybe help me um, in having a more enlarged perspective about the history of religion as a whole some of them are referring specifically about the Bible but other ones are more general like this uh, this series of books in particular and I'm making a warm-up like books that maybe talk about the history of the Bible specifically or books about the the books included in the Bible so a bit of a perspective about that and then I'm making a cooldown um, so like books that will also be in that form but that will have like for instance a book by Northrop Fry Bible and Literature Literature I'm sorry I never say this word correctly the I don't know the title in English the um, this is what I'm saying the Bible and Literature it is subtitle but if you research for it I'm sure you will find it so books like that that will refer to the Bible in some kind of way but will be also talking about other subjects or be a relation or um, see, yes a relation with other subjects in the perspective of the reading of the Bible so yeah kind of those type of books but as I'm as as I was saying, I'm still researching and making my collection of titles and so on. So I'm not going. So I'm not sure how or when I'm going to start reading and start actually the project. But I'm planning to film as I'm going as I'm reading so be doing reviews about the books that I'm I was talking to you about and do a full project about the Bible um, of course this is not an original idea other channels have already done this or at least a bit similar to this and one of them as I I talked 
I talked about her so much in this channel, but she is, as I said before, my reference on Booktube. And it's Tatiana Feltrin, a Brazilian Booktuber, and she is currently doing um, reading of the Bible, and she's, she reads a book per month, and she does every first Friday of each month a review video about the book that she read in said month. So I'm planning to do that as well, but in this channel, so I'm going to talk in English, although every um, book or almost every book I'm going to buy in Portuguese because I want to understand, have, having, I want to have a better understanding of the content the content that I'm reading, so of course that's more easy to me if it is in Portuguese. Even the Bible I'm going to read in Portuguese. You know, I have to help myself doing the job, but I will reference, of course, everything in English and I will put images so you, if you're interested, so you to follow along and perhaps research for the books in English yourself. So yeah, but that's uh, nothing really related to the video that I'm making, but related with these books that I refer to you. So yeah, okay. So then I recently rewatched a video of uh, Jessica Braun and Tyler Braun. The, they are a couple and uh, I watch Jessica Braun videos and Tyler Braun videos. I'm going to put the images and I'm going to link all the channels that I'm talking about down below in the box description. So you, if you're interested to check it out, but I'm, I'm going to put an image of their uh, picture on YouTube and their names on YouTube. So you to recognize them and as I was saying, they are a couple and they do vlogs regularly or at least, well, the vlogs they do together are more on Tyler channel and he does vlogs and travel vlogs and because he's a um, travel agent. So, and specifically, specifically, specifically more of a Disney travel agent. So if you're interested to check his channel and check the box description in his videos and perhaps even his uh, about on his channel you will find the links i don't know if he has a site but i suppose he links his travel agency there so you to check it out he talks about that also um and i'm not in us in the us so for me it's not really useful but if you're from us i don't know if you i'm supposing you can i don't know i don't know how that works i'm sorry <laughs> but if you are if you live in the us uh, and if you are interested in disney travels or he doesn't do just disney but he's more directed to disney okay okay so I rewatched a video because Jessica referred to it in her last video or in a more recent video of hers in her channel and she refer because they do uh, books that they read till the mid year and then in at the end of the year and I love watching those videos I love to see what people are reading or what they find or what they think about the books that they've read and um, I enjoy seeing those type of videos in their channel because I love them as well. I really enjoy their, their personalities um, and th she referred to a video that they have done like two to three years ago in a, I think it was Vlogmas, where they had to um, refilm many times the same thing where they were talking about the books that they've read because or the camera wasn't filming or 
it didn't have sound or they think it was a recording and it wasn't and they were laughing <laughs> so much on that video because they were repeating themselves and repeating the same jokes and they were laughing at each other because of what they were saying and repeating so it was really fun and I rewatched that video and uh, Tyler talked about the book that he had read about um, the world of Disney uh, or at least of someone that worked for Disney, a director I'm, I'm thinking and this is called Creating Magic by Lee Cockrell I, I'm supposing it, it's like this that is said but I'm not quite sure and this book Tyler said it's about leadership and because Tyler worked in hotels in the reception uh, I, I'm, I think it, 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 he told in that video that he read this book when he, he, he was young and it was because of this book that he wanted to work in hotels and it was perhaps because of this book that he eventually created his travel agency so and uh, he also told that it was because of this book that perhaps because he um, he did the the or he, he applied the behaviors that were talked about in this book in his work and he thinks that was because of that that he was promoted to how is it called to manager so um, rapidly so he has a very interesting journey as well and and I'm going to read a little bit about the synopsis so you have an idea so it says it's not a magic that makes it work it's the way we work that makes it magic the secret for creating magic in our careers our organizations and our lives is simple outstanding leadership the kind that inspires employees, delights customers and achieves extraordinary business results. No one knows more about this kind of leadership than Lee Cockerell, the man who ran, who ran Walt Disney World Resort operations for over a decade. And in Creating Magic, he shares the leadership principles that not only guided his own journey from a poor farm boy in Oklahoma to the head of operations for a multi-billion dollar enterprise. But that also soon came to form the cultural bedrock of the world's number one vacation destination. But as Lee demonstrates, great leadership isn't about mastering impossible complex manage man management theories. We can all become outstanding leaders by following the 10 practical common sense strategies outlined in his remar remarkable book. As straightforward as they are profound, these leadership lessons include Everyone is important. Make your people your brand. Burn the free fuel, appreciation, recognition and encouragement. Give people a purpose, not just a job. Combining surprising businesses business wisdom with insightful and entertaining stories from Lee's four decades of the, on the front lines of some of the world's best run companies. Creating Magic shows all of us, from small business owners to managers at every level, how to become better leaders by infusing quality, character, courage, enthusiasm and integrity into our workplace and into our lives. So, as you can see, this is a very interesting book from the, a person that was in the job doing and making, making it happen. So, I think is a testimony that is really interesting to read, so I'm quite curious about it. Then, all the books that I'm going to talk about um, are referred from the same person. And she's called Miranda Mills. I found her channel, if I'm not mistaken, this year, at the beginning of the year. 
and it was randomly it was like a youtube suggestion or um when you are scrolling to uh, to your in your feed it appears new channels and i click in one of her videos and i fall in love so she lives in the uk uk in yorkshire uh, she has moved from london to yorkshire maybe two to three years ago or more i'm not, now i'm not sure because when i start watching her videos she was already there of course she is a seasonal reader so she reads according to the seasons or the most of her reading is like that and she talks about life in the country in the countryside she 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 does mainly vlogs so she talks about a bit about her purchases book hauls um, and she lives with her mother and sometimes they do stuff together and they talk to the camera together uh, about what they are reading about commonplace book that was something that i found out recently and i'm quite interested in beginning my own commonplace book uh, or notebook or whatever you want to call it she has a site a blog where she also posts um, about stuff that she's currently doing or interviews with authors so, so she's quite diverse in her platforms and i love her i'm going to put also a, a picture of her channel right here so you can see it and you can find her on youtube and i'm going to link her channel down, down below as well so go check her out she's wonderful i love her i love her style i love her content so yeah so then the first book is heaven on earth the lives and legacies of the world's greatest cathedrals by emma g wells so a glorious illustrative history of 20 of the world's greatest cathedrals interwoven with the extraordinary stories of the people who built them heaven on earth covers an entire millennium millennium of cathedral building from the AD 500 to the 16th century. The central core of Emma Wells' books, book focuses on the explosion of ecclesial construction that began with the emergence of the Gothic style in 12th century France, which produced such remarkable structures as the cathedrals of Notre Dame, Canterbury, Chart Salisbury, St. Mark's Basili Basilica in Venice, and the Santi Chapel in Paris. From Constantinople, Agia Sophia, to London's Westminster Abbey. From Florence Duomo to St. Basil in Moscow. Emma Wells tells the story of the feats of engineer engineering that brought 20 great cathedrals cathedrals into being more than architectural biographies these are human stories of triumph and tragedy and tragedy that take the reader from the chaotic atmosphere of the mason's yard to the cloisters of power together they reveal how 1000 years of cathedral cathedral building shaped modern europe and influenced art, culture, and society around the world. So, as you may know, I I think I said this in at least one video. Um, I consider myself agnostic, but I was raised in a Catholic family. Uh, right now, or a few from, a f well, we never were, my family never was, a practicing Catholic family. I went to the, sh the church to learn about Jesus and God and how is that called? Catechism. You know, I learned about God and when I was younger, I believed in God um, and I prayed every night before going to sleep. 
so I had rituals and I had my faith in God and Jesus. You know, I, I, grew, I grew up in that environment and although my family wasn't a Catholic practicing family, I went to, to church, I went to the Mass. Is that how you call it? I'm sorry, but you can, I think you understand what I mean. And you know, I had my faith, uh, but although now I'm a, an agnostic, um, I do love architectural history and I love monuments. And even though Catholic monuments, I love them. I think they are beautiful. So I enjoy the European history about religion or Catholicism and I love churches. I love hearing the bells of when they mark the time. I love hearing the bells of churches. When I found uh, through Miranda channel about this book, I was very interested and I think even if you aren't, you know, a Catholic or even if you aren't a religions, a religion person, or a religious person. I think you can you can find interesting points about history because you may be an architectural lover as myself. So, and as you may understand by now, I'm um, a very interested person in religion, although I'm not a believer, but I'm very interested in the topic because I find it fascinating. And yeah, I'm, I'm really quite uh, curious about this book and yeah I'm hopefully I I will read it not soon soon but soon the other one or the next one is Femina by Janina Ramirez the Middle Ages the Middle Ages are seen as a bio thirsty time of Vikings saints and kings a patriarchal society which oppressed and excludes excluded women. But when we dig a little deeper into the truth, we can see that the Dark Ages were anything but. Oxford and BBC historian Janina Ramirez has uncovered countless influential women names struck out of historical records with the world feminine annotative bias beside them. As gatekeepers of the past ordered books to, the burn, to be burned, artworks to be destroyed and new versions of myths, legends and historical documents to be produced, our views of history has been manipulated. Only now, through a careful examination of the artifacts, writing as possessions they left behind, are the influential and multifaceted lives of women emerging. Femina goes beyond the official records to uncover the truth impact of women like Jadwiga, the only female king in Europe, Marjorie Kemp, who exploited her image and story to ensure her notoriety, and the Loftus princess, whose existence gives us clues about the beginnings of Christianity in England. See the medieval world with fresh eyes and discover why these remarkable women were removed from our collective memories. So this is quite a, an anthem <laughs> for women. And I found, although I'm not, I'm, I don't consider myself a feminist, um, or at least, well, I consider myself a feminist, but not quite as it is in modern days because I think feminism is a bit um, an extreme position right now and I don't agree with everything that is being or has as is being portrayed by the feminists uh, so I'm not quite sure if I can consider in modern days I can consider myself a, a feminist but I I stand for women and I found this type of books very interesting um, and I think uh, I, I now I'm remembering a book that is called Yeah, The Story of Art Without Men by Katie Hessel. 
um, I'm also remembering that book uh, and I'm quite inter interested in reading, although I haven't read the, the story of art, the original book, but I'm quite interested to read this one. And yeah, I'm, I find this, when I heard about this in, in Miranda's video, I found it right away a book that I wanted to read because although I'm a woman, I don't know many, many things about the history of women and the journey of women through society. So everything that I can catch about it and be more knowledgeable, knowledge, knowledgeable, knowledge about it, about, uh, I find quite important and yeah, I want to be more knowledge about the subject. So there you go. Then the next book is the writers, the writer's library, the authors you love on the books that change their lives. 23 of today's living liter literary legends, including Donna Tart, Viet Van Nguyen, Andrew Sin Greer, and others, reveal the books that made them think, brought them joy and changed their lives in this intimate, moving and insightful collection that celebrates the power of literature and reading to connect us all. There's more, but I'm not going to read because I think this um, summarizes what the book is about. So I'm always searching for more tips on books and more uh, tips on new authors or, or authors that I don't know. So I find this book, um, you know, quite useful and I'm quite interested in it, so yeah. Next up is Pandora's Jar, Women in the Greek Myths by Natalie Hines. I don't know if I said the author of the um, pr previous book, but it's by Nancy Porrell and Jeff Wegger, or Dweger, I don't know how to say it. So as I was saying, another book is Pandora's Jar, Women in the Greek, Greek Myths, by Natalie Hines. Uh, so, the Greek myths are one of the most important, important cultural foundation stones of the modern world. Stories of gods and monsters are the mainstay of epic poetry and Greek tragedy. From Homer to Virgil to, to from Aeschylus, I to Sophocles and Euripides, and still today a wealth of novels, plays and films draw their in inspiration from stories first told almost 3,000 3, years ago. But m modern tellers of Greek myth have usually been men and have routinely shown little interest in telling women's stories. Now, in Pandora's Jar, Natalie Hines, broadcaster, writer and passionate classicist, redigress, redresses this imbalance, taking great creation myths as her starting point and then retelling the four great myth sagas, the Trojan War, the Royal House of Thebes, Jason and the Argonauts, Heracles, she puts the female characters on equal footing with their menfolk. The result is a vivid and powerful account of the deeds, as misdeeds, of Hera, Aphrodite, Athens, and Circe. And away from the go goddesses of Mount Olympus, it is Helen, Clytemnestra, Jocasta, Antigone, and Medea, who sing from these pages, not Paris, Agamemnon, Orestes, or Jason. So yeah, uh, another book that is um, an anthem for women and women history, or at least women myths, <laughs> as there exist men myths, as she was saying, uh, as it was told in this synopsis, she will take the women's perspective on these stories and um, will make their, 
them protagonists of these stories. So I don't know very much about Greek myths or Greek history. I never read the Iliad or the um, Odyssey. I'm, I, I want to read them uh, or I want to read it, but maybe not in quite the near future, maybe a bit um, forward in time <laughs> or a bit later because I also want to acquire the books in physical form and I want to acquire them in Portuguese. Yeah, I want to read in Portuguese, of course, because I think it will be more understandable to me. So there you go. Then next up, we have The Secret Life of Tartan, How a Cloth Shaped a Nation by Vixi Ray. Tartan is so much more than just a cloth. From its clan origins in Scottish Highlands to the catwalks of Milan, London and New York, from its regimental history to its anti-establishment status, Tartan has not only shaped a nation but has become an international Stein icon. The Secret Life of Tartan is as colorful and interwoven as the threads of the fabric itself. From tropes in black what Watch Tartan controlling Highland rebels to the Balmoral Tartan exclusively worn by royalty, from the first Tartan on the moon to the pattern of choice for punk and high fashion alike, Tartan truly has a remarkable universal status. Today, Tartan evokes history, kinship, tradition, romance, irrever irreverence, fashion and style. The Secret Life of Tartan unravels the truths and the myths of the cloth that shaped the nation to reveal how it has captured hearts around the world. So, as you can see, this is quite interesting. I find it every, everything that I can find to make me more knowledgeable, I, I fall in love with it. So, yeah, this is one of them. Oh, the next step is from Jean Cromley and is about books that are in a series. So it talks about the seasons, the four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, autumn and winter. And I'm supposing this is about nature and differences and changes uh, in nature with the seasons. This is always, this was also in Miranda's video and my plan is to in autumn that is coming read the autumn book and then read the winter book the spring and summer book so accompanying the seasons as they come and i'm i'm really curious about it because miranda is also a nature reader and she loves authors that talk about nature as she is a seasonal person that's you know uh, natural uh, and she talks about uh, gardens and books about gardens and books about nature uh, often in her channel. So when I first heard about these books, I, you know, I was very interested in, in it. So yeah, next up we, we have Portable Magic, a history of books and their readers by Emma Smith. Most of what they say about books is really about the words inside the rosy nostal nostalgic glow for childhood reading, the lifetime companionship of a much-loved novel. But books are things as well as words, objects in our lives, as well as worlds in our heads. And just as we crack their, their spines, loosen their leaves and write in their margins, so they disrupt and disorder us in turn. All books are, as Stephen King put it, a uniquely portable magic. Here Emma Smith shows us why. Portable magic unfurls an exciting and iconoclastic new story of the book in human hands, exploring when, why and how it acquired its particular, particular hold over us. Gathering together a millennium's worth of pivotal encounters with volumes big and small, Smith 
reveals that as much as their content, it is book's physical form, their book wood, that lends them their distinctive and sometimes dangerous magic. From the diamonds through sutra to Jilly Copper's readers, writers, to a book made of wrapped slices of cheese, this composite artisanal object has for centuries embodied and extended relationships between readers, nations, ideologies and cultures and culture, cultures in significant and unpredictable ways. Okay, that's enough. So as you can see, this will talk about the history of the physical form of books, what they mean to us, um, what they represent. So as I'm a more recent reader or usual reader, um, I like the physical form of books and learning more about the history of that is, I think, important uh, and a curious fact about it, so yeah. Next up we have Fabric, The Hidden History of the Material World by Victoria Finley. A magnificent work of original research and winding history th through cloth how we make it, use it, and what it means to us. From our earliest ancestors to babies born today, fabric is a necessary part of our everyday lives, but is also an opportunity for creativity, symbolism, culture, and connection. Traveling across the world and bringing history to life, best-selling author Victoria Finley investigates how and why people have made and used cloth. Okay, so uh, this as the previous book that I told you about. This is also 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 this is also about the history of fabric and what represents to us. So we put on clothes every day, and we have a necessity of clothes. So reading about the history of fabric and how it started is quite interesting. We are almost there. I only have two more books to talk about, so please stay with me. <laughs> Square Hunting, Five Writers in London Between the Wars. In the early 20th century, Mecklenburg Square, a haven architectural gem in London's Bloom, Bloom, Bloomsbury was a radical address, home to students, traveling artists and revolutionaries. And in the pivotal hour between the two world, world wars, the lives of five remarkable women intertwined, inter, intertwined around this one address. The modernist poet H.D detective novelist Dorothy L. Sayers, classicist Jane Harrison, econ economic historian Eileen Ellen Power, and author and publisher v Virginia Woolf. In an era when women's freedom were fast expanding, they each sought a space where they could live, love, and above all, work independently. With sparkling insight and the novelistic style, Francesca Wade sheds new light on a group of artists and thinkers whose plundering work will enrich the possibilities of women's life, lives for generations to come. So I don't know if I mentioned, but this is by Francesca Wade, as I referred. And yeah. Again, this is a book about women and more specific, specifically why they lived um, in a specific address in London that I find <laughs> quite curious. As Miranda is English, she reads a lot about English or UK history or English history. So that's why this surrounds the UK. Um, but, you know, this is about many things, the books that she shares. Um, as 
you can understand by now. So yeah, I'm quite interested in this one as well. Okay, last one. Hidden Hands, The Lives of Manuscripts and Their Makers by Mary Wellesley. So this is about the engagement arising from the author's deep commitment to understanding the lives of medieval women and men and the beauty from her ability to make us see and hear them talking about and living their experiences. It isn't just an introduction introduction to literary manuscripts but also a series of glimpses of the extraordinary diversity of medieval lives. Mary Wellesley has taken jewels from our bibliograph bibliographic treasures and placed them carefully and we love in the palm of the reader's hand. This is by Ian e. Mortimer. So this has more references about this book by other people but i think this is enough so this is about manuscripts as the title says and the lives of medieval times and the medieval era and i find that again very interesting and you know uh, seeing or reading about how it all began with books and um, copying books and that tradition I, I'm supposing this is more in Europe where it all started or at least in the medieval times where it all started and yeah I'm when she first talked about it I mean Miranda I was very catch on on it yeah I'm hopefully this will be a very interesting book so okay we are done this is my recommendations to you although I'm I haven't read any of the books, but this is my pick of interest right now and I wanted to share this with you and hopefully you find it, you found tips to, for your TBR as well. So hopefully we, you found this useful and interesting and I'm, hope, I'm hoping that at least some of the books you never heard about. So yeah. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Leave a like, it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And I see you on the next one. Bye!